Hey guys, it's Dram and Abby again. I know we haven't been posting as frequently as we have in the past, um, but we've run into a couple of matters that needed attending and we didn't want to leave you guys in the dark, so we we're gonna talk about it now. As you know, Drem and I have been, we've been married for about four years now. We just celebrated our anniversary in October and we've been trying to have kids just as long. Um, so yeah, we've been trying uh, to start a family for um, a couple of years now. At first we were just like, you know, whatever happens, happens, you know. It's, it's fun doing it, you know, what everybody says. Um, but after a while, you know, after a couple years of trying, we started to get a little bit more serious about it because uh, we just wanted to know that if this was possible for us, that it probably should have happened naturally earlier. Already. Already, yeah. Already. Um, so first, Abby went to see her doctor to make sure that all of her stuff was working correctly. Um, after a couple of visits, I think it was like two visits, right? Yeah. Two visits, um, we found out that she was perfectly okay. And then after that, we just went back to, you know, just trying naturally again. Because I was more reluctant to, reluctant to figure out what was wrong with me. So we kind of played it off a little bit. But um, again, after a couple months of trying naturally again, um, it was my turn to go see a doctor. First visit, I just switched doctors. He is uh, my first visit with him. So he had no like blood work with me and he went, didn't have any background. So he sent me down to the lab to get um, my blood work done just for, you know, physical. While I was at my appointment, I asked him about um, fertility issues because um, I told him that we were trying to start a family and we've been married for quite a while now and we're both young and we wanted to, you know, see what what was going on. And he also said that it's um, unusual for well young young people to have issues with um, <clears throat> fertility when, when we, you know, when we're young. <laughs> or you're supposed to seek help after a year without any success? Uh, we didn't wait a year. Yeah. We went a couple of years after that. Because we were still traveling, we were switching jobs. Mm -hmm. Things were going on in our life where we just, it didn't seem that important for us to figure out what was going on. So I told our doc my doctor that and he said, okay, we'll do uh, analysis on, on me. So when I got my blood work done, I also submitted a sample and it took um, just just a day to get my results back. It turns out that, that there's something wrong with me. Um, he referred me to a specialist. And now, when he said specialist, I thought he was um, <clears throat> recommending me to a, a fertility specialist. But instead, he referred me to a urologist, which is different. It's not the same. And I found that out too late. <laughs> but even still, I went to the urologist. I told him the exact same thing that was going on um, with me. He asked for my family history, and then I started mapping out in my head. I was, and I was like, actually, um, I have two um, guy cousins. Um, they, they're married, and they also don't have their own children. So I brought that up with him, and the doctor was thinking about it, you know, pulling out all the stuff, trying to think about what it could be. First, he asked if it was on my mom's side or dad's side, and I said it was on my dad's side. And then he asked um, if my dad had brothers, and he said, yes, I have two. he has uh, two brothers, so I, there's the three of them. And then he asked if the three brothers had sons. And I said, yes, that's exactly right. And he said, okay, this might actually be something called Y chromosome microdeletion. Now it's a genetic um, abnormality with something with a Y chromosome, something missing there, but it causes low counts everywhere. Um, it affects me. Oh, so he'll send me back to the lab again to get more blood work done, more, more samples taken and um, he said that it would take a couple of weeks for get, to get the results back. And so yeah, so we're now just, um, we're waiting for the test results to come back to see, to see whether or not I have this deficiency. And um, got our minds working a little bit, you know, what is the next step that we would do? Because um, we're just thinking about it to see what our other options are. We started researching um, infertility clinics that are around us. IVF, looking at hormone pills, injections, all these things, just in case, um, worst case, worst case scenario that I did have that defic deficiency. If any of you know me, you know that I'm a planner. I plan everything ahead of time. I plan parties months in advance. I just, I plan everything from the moment I know until the moment it happens. So when Jerem and I um, 
Sorry. This is really hard. When Jerem and I started talking about um, starting a family, I started planning for it. Um, we started reading baby books. We started researching. We started saving. And, you know, um, I used to coupon for a while, so I would find baby deals. We start, we have already started our nursery. We already have a crib, a bassinet, diapers, <laughs> pacifiers, bottles, stuffed animals. We basically have everything but a baby. And it just makes me so sad that, you know, there are options for adoption or fostering or, you know, um, sperm donors, but it just makes me so heartbroken that I might never carry Jerem's child. Like, he's such a good person, so I don't know why there can't be more people like him. On my end of that, um, when I found out that it was actually me that was the one, I would say, responsible for not being able to have a child, um, I was thinking to myself, what can I do, what can I do for my part that could, you know, help our situation and when I was thinking about it in my head there, there really isn't anything that I can do it's nothing that I could have changed it's nothing that I did it's just something that happened so there's absolutely no way your fault and yeah it's not my fault but if it, it just feels like I'm the one responsible for it so I was I was um there was a little bit of inner turmoil in in this in that sense where I just didn't know what to do because you know when there's a problem I just I want to jump on it I want to fix it I want to do everything that I can to see what we can do in this in this case there's nothing that I can do and so it kind of just it's breaking me in half because part of me wants to accept it and the other part just wants to fix it so that's where I am at right now in my head um and also we've throughout all this um i haven't really been showing the type of emotion that i could be showing towards abby about this um i mean as you can see abby likes to show her emotions on her sleeves i i don't i internalize pretty much everything and i process everything in my head i don't like to i just <laughs> have a hard time it just, i just have a hard time keeping emotions in <laughs> It just is how it is. She she loves pouring her heart out, and I I love doing it too. But I just I show it differently, and we've it caused a little bit of a crossroads with us because it would look like I didn't care because I wasn't bawling my eyes out. It but, made me. It kind of made me feel that I wanted a baby more than Jerem did, even though in my heart of hearts I know that's not true. Which just, isn't true. I mean, which is the true. total, the emotion, the heartbreaking situation, it just, it consumes you. Um, it is definitely the hardest thing our marriage has encountered. Um, I know we'll make it through this, but each day is a new battle, um, We've definitely been through a lot of crying, some yelling. Um, I've had a couple good days, you know. Um, I have a friend that's really supportive that helps me talk about anxiety. She's kind of like a therapist and she's really been there for me and I'm so thankful for her. So that's where we are right now. Um, we're waiting for the test results to come back and we'll just pick it up from there. Thanks for watching, guys. Thanks for listening. Bye.